Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another attachment pack update. Today we're going to be talking about all of the new attachments added to specifically the double barrel shotgun in Fallout 4. Now, just in case you are a new viewer or this is the first time you've heard anything about the attachment pack, this is a very large project of mine to overhaul Fallout 4's weapon sandbox, adding way more choices and way more variety to these weapons, similar to what you would find in standalone modded weapons, helping to bring the vanilla weapons sort of up to snuff and making them still viable in a modded playthrough. So what we'll be showing off today is all of the new attachments, additions, and changes I've made to the double barrel shotgun to help add a little bit more variety to its gameplay styles available, as well as some very much needed improvements to the shotgun that I think just should have been there in the first place. You should see some B-roll playing already of some of the new attachments, so feel free to take a look at some of those, but we'll go over them a bit more in depth later as we go through every single attachment over at the workbench. But first, I want to talk about some of the design methodology and the processes of how I wanted to make changes to the double barrel shotgun. One of the most important changes that I saw that needed to be fixed was the really, in my opinion, atrocious iron sight. Now I know bead sights are a pretty common thing on shotguns, but the scaling on Fallout 4's double barrel is just very odd, and so the iron sight was kind of massive and unusable. So I wanted to address that first of all, and I think I definitely did, adding a new set of rear and front iron sights that are added in a pretty interesting way. They don't actually use the sight category, but rather the barrel category. We'll focus on that a little bit more later. Additionally, I wanted to add to its close quarters gameplay style by offering a lot of ways to beef up the melee damage on the shotgun, something you don't really see utilized in weapon mods. I tried to add multiple ways to increase the bashing damage as this is a weapon that you're going to be reloading a lot. And so if an enemy rushes you and you're in the middle of a reload, you need some sort of a way to counteract that. And having the ability to bash to interrupt reloads is very nice. And so having more ways to increase that damage is even better. So that being said, there are now a handful of new ways to increase the bash damage on this weapon, and some of them even do stack. Now, the final thing that I thought needed to be addressed was the regular vanilla full stock. It just looks bad to me. Not just in a design standpoint, but realistically, this weapon would be so uncomfortable to wield. It's very wide, flat, it has a terribly awful metal butt plate that seems like it would just cut you up every time you shot it, so... I needed to give some new options to the player that looked a little bit sleeker and hopefully a little bit more comfortable. Now altogether, I think we got some pretty cool new attachments and ways to improve the weapon and I think that most of them fit very well in vanilla Fallout 4's aesthetic, which is always my main goal. With that, let's go ahead and head over to the weapons workbench and talk about some of these different attachments in a finer detail. So here we have the vanilla double barrel shotgun, a weapon that we should all know and love, something very familiar to us all, as it is an early game weapon that you see pretty dang often in the hands of raiders. Well now there are some new upgrades. I actually want to talk about receivers last, as I think it has one of the most interesting attachments. Let's go ahead and start off with barrels, which definitely has some really cool new changes. Now, in the base game, there are only three barrels, and you'll see that now we have a whopping ten barrels to choose from. We of course have the short, sawed off, and long barrel which were available in the base game, but now we also have access to the marksman barrel, an even longer option for those of you who really want to stretch out the range of your shotgun. And then in the inverse direction we have the bruiser barrel, a sawn off only shotgun that offers a large axe head to this thing, giving you improved bashing damage, but again only the stats of the sawn off barrel. I wanted to lock this to the sawn off barrel as a bit of an attempt to balance the weapon to make it so that you have to treat this like a close quarters weapon and that's the only way that you can use this but you get some really massive bashing damage with that now on top of these five barrels i have five more barrels that are improved versions of each of these and this is where that new iron sight comes in so we have the improved sawed off the improved short the improved long the improved bruiser and the improved marksman barrel and each of these offer a new rear and front sight that is a bit more usable than the vanilla sight, allowing you to actually aim with this thing and be a little bit more precise, especially with some of the other attachments, that's actually something that's going to matter. Now, moving on, we have the stock section where we have a handful of new stocks to help make the weapon look a bit better. Of course, in the vanilla game, we have the short stock, but now in the short stock category, we also have the bruiser stock, which offers a nice gear-shaped knuckle duster as well as a claw-shaped blade 
to allow you even more bashing damage, and you can pair that with the Bruiser Barrel for a really cool short range combo. We also have the Vanilla Full Stock and an adaptation known as the Comfort Stock, which adds a nice duct tape wrap and will give you a slightly tighter hip fire and a faster aim down sights. It's essentially the same as the Full Stock, but just has a little bit of quirks that make it a teensy bit better in combat. Now, one of the cool new stocks that I'm very, very happy with is the Reinforce Stock, which has a whole new aesthetic, offering something a little bit more traditional in terms of double barrel shotguns. And this thing is going to be a little bit heavier, but offer better recoil and a slightly improved bash since it is quite a bit heavier. This is actually a vanilla asset, believe it or not, coming from the Railway Rifle, but I have made some significant tweaks to the mesh to make it actually fit into the double barrel shotgun receiver. And I have to say, I'm very, very happy with how this thing came out. It actually looks like it just sort of belongs here. Now, moving on, we've got some pretty interesting new additions like the recoil compensating stock. This is actually taken from the Gamma Rifle, I mean the Radium Rifle from Far Harbor DLC, and this is going to allow you to have some more recoil compensation for the weapon. Now you'll notice that the wood textures aren't exactly the same here in the preview menu, but they actually look perfectly fine in your hands in first person and third person. Once you're in game, it looks totally fine. It's just the preview menu that they look really, really off. But personally, I think this is a pretty neat design, and we have some more variations of this as well. Moving on, we have the Marksman stock, which is going to take that same stock, and have a jury-rigged sort of cheek rest that you can use to allow for better aim with scopes. And then we can elaborate on this even further by adding the Sniper stock, which is going to be a full version of the Radium Rifle stock, combined with a cheek rest, allowing you to actually use this like sort of a sniper, which does actually come up with some of the new scopes and receiver options. One thing about this Radium Rifle, by the way, is this isn't the regular asset. I have modified this, much like the Reinforced Stock. So if you ever want to use this stock, once this mod comes out, it is totally free to use, as it does have some cool custom tweaks that make it a little bit more usable for other weapons. Now then, moving on to the Sights category, there is only one new option, and that is the short scope something that was for some reason missing on the vanilla gun now we actually do have a scope that you can use for more precise shots now typically that's not really going to matter on a shotgun but there are some new attachments that make this matter very very much additionally don't forget to pick up the west tech optics pack as that is completely compatible to get even more scopes for this weapon now, moving on to the muzzle category, we have some really fun new stuff. In the base game, we only have the muzzle brake and the spiked muzzle brake, but now we have a plethora of new options, including the new shotgun choke, which is going to tighten down that hip fire spread. We also have a bayonet, something that was missing from the shotgun as well. This is going to allow you even more bashing options that you can use to help dispose of your foes once you're out of ammo. Now we have the vanilla muzzle brake and spiked muzzle brake, but we also have the inclusion of a heavy muzzle brake, offering you even more late game options for balancing out your recoil and a pretty neat aesthetic in my opinion. And then finally, we have the addition of the suppressor. I went back and forth a lot as to whether or not I wanted to include this as an option, but I finally managed to make a model that I quite liked, and I was even able to match the textures pretty well to the vanilla gun, so I think this thing came out pretty dang cool, and it does allow you to have a suppressed option for the weapon, so that's pretty neat. Now there is one more attachment to talk about, and that is actually in the receiver section, and that is the newly added big game receiver. All of the other shotgun receivers are still here, but now we have an option that will rechamber this weapon, into 50 caliber. It is the same diameter pretty much as a 12 gauge shotgun shell, and now we have a refitted receiver to properly make use of the 50 caliber round, allowing you to make some very precise shots rather than a buckshot spread. And this is going to give you a pretty hefty damage. I have maxed out perks currently, and that's going to give you a total damage of 180 in the late game, allowing you to put down small targets very, very easily. Bigger targets you're still going to have some trouble with because you do have to reload after every two shots, but it does pack quite a punch, even more than the 50 caliber sniper rifle. I definitely think that a lot of these changes help to add more variety to the ways you can play with the double barrel shotgun, allowing you to emphasize on that close range combat or even try some long range playstyles with the newly added big game receiver and some of the cool stocks and scopes. Altogether, I think I'm really, really pleased with the double barrel shotgun. We did this one pretty dang quick and I'm very happy with the outcome. I hope you guys like it as well. This attachment pack is getting closer and closer to completion with every one of these update videos, so sit tight. I know you guys get frustrated that it's not out yet, but with each one of these, we are ever so slightly closer to finishing this thing. There's only a handful of weapons left to do, and I think that we've gotten most of the difficult ones out of the way already. 
One of the weapons I want to check out next is definitely going to be the combat shotgun. Doing the double barrel shotgun just has me in that shotgun mood, so stay tuned for that next. And I'm sure that once we do the combat shotgun, we'll want to move on to the combat rifle right after that. So stay tuned. We'll have more updates coming very, very soon. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating. It really helps out the channel. And consider subscribing if you somehow haven't already for more videos just like this. Big shout out to all of my patrons for supporting every single mod I make, as well as every video here on YouTube. And a very special thank you to Avian4, Captain Chaos, Freedom, Glasma, Helljumper, Indecisive Wolf, Jackie Noid, Kid Hades, Cushy, Logan Rigmaiden, Microhan, Moonlit Gamer, Oscar, Scott, Sterling, Steven, Timmy76, YouthRC, and Voider for joining that Tier 3 Patreon membership. If you'd like to support the channel over on Patreon, you can do so using the link down in the description, but it is completely optional. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace!